I turned recording off before you started. I just started now, so because a lot of people um, haven't been able to watch this, so they'll do it on YouTube. So, right, I've got the page. Right, I've got Anybody catching up? Anybody doing any work? I am going to try. <laughs> oh, there you go. Soggy. Oh, Derek song. No, I'm still here. Oh, that's all right then. Just <laughs> there we go. Right, fair enough. Um, that often happens uh, to me. So we've got. Um, I'm just waiting for that to dry a little bit for the sheen to go off it. Oh, Jen. You ignored yeah. me yesterday. Pardon? You ignored me yesterday. I you were driving you. out of Bersham Road and I was driving in. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you. I know you didn't, but never oh, mind. sorry. I nearly crashed the car and to... something else. I was going, oh, it's Jen. <laughs> <laughs> right, oh, sorry. okay. Um, okay. So now that's the sheen should have just gone off that a little bit. You can see. Um, so what I'm going to do now is mix up a little bit of ultramarine blue, a little bit of raw umber, get a grainy sort of colour for the sky. Put some more water in it so it's nice and lollopy always remember with watercolor that it dries about 50 percent of what you see when you put it on wet so i'm using that brush because i don't want to do huge big bits i'm going to do dabs and squibbles now it's all just doesn't matter what brush you're using, as long as it's big. Don't faff around with little brushes. Well, if you want to faff around with little brushes, feel free. But it takes a lot longer. Uh, what I'm doing now, at the bottom of this, I'm just adding water to let it run down the page. And to help it run, it's going to tip the board up. Quite a bit of water in there. And now, I don't know if you can see that, but it's got quite a lot of rainy looking things in it. Now, to stop it running down, Put some water in there, help it. And what you can do is turn it sideways. Don't know if you can see that. Turn it sideways and it stops going downwards, goes sideways. You can do it upside down as well. Let it go back where it came from. Now, while that's still wet, I'm going to stick it. I've got a rush now. I'll have a little break in a minute, but I want to keep the edge wet. So while that's still keeping wet, I'm going to change to one of my Stratford and York's lovely brush. I can't buy them anymore. They went out of business and it's really sad. Okay, so autumn trees, not a lot of leaves. Got some raw umber. Where's it gone there? And into that, I'm going to put a little dash of light red. Make it a bit autumn -y. Now that's not particularly dark because I, I want it to fade into the background. Now it should have nice soft edges. I'll turn it over so that the branches run into the sky. Now 
There we go, it's an Australian landscape, yeah? <laughs> So you've got it upside down at the moment then, Keith? Yeah, I'll say again. You've got it upside down at the moment, have you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's difficult to tell at the moment, but all I'm doing is letting the brownie colour run into the sky. So when you turn it the right way up, it looks a bit as if the trees are going that way. Ah, yes. So, while that's wet, mix up a darker colour. Again, raw umber. Basically, for this bit, I'm only using those colours. Those colours. I put everything out in this because I sometimes use different ones. I'm putting some blue into that to darken it. And then... That's a good noise, whoever's making it. Oh, it's my flipping phone, sorry. <laughs> and some of the raw sienna I'm putting in the bottom. I'm hoping all this will merge together. Oh, yeah. I'm going to put some, mix some hooker's green, which I don't usually use very much. Hooker's green, and into that, mm -hmm. I'm going to put some sienna. Sort of that colour when the leaves are just on the chain. Some of that into here. You can see how careful I'm being with it. It doesn't really matter what it looks like at this stage. I was just going to wait it all to dry. Oh look, I've got some weird little clouds up there where I've dripped water. Never mind, I can always because it's still wet, I can put more water in. Or, I could, because I've got that nice and wet, with this brush just damp. I can pull out the cloud. So there we go, it doesn't matter, there's going to be trees growing up there in all probability before we finish. Right, well, I've got those nice and damp. I'm going to start moving the paper around, letting them all blend into each other. There you go, that's my drawing board. It's a piece of free fly. Oh, I know where I got this from. I actually nicked that off the wall in T Pow when they were doing it out. Ah. When we were in there the very first time, it was it was on the wall, held on by glue, and it fell off. So I nicked it. It was a whole big bit. Right. Okay. Now that's sort of semi-dry. What I'm going to do is with my magic finger. Ooh. There we go. Just a fingernail. Mm. And pull out some tree trunks. Also, while it's wet, get me little thingy brush, rigger, mix up some very dark which is ultramarine. Oh, there's some alizarin got into that. 
mix it up with the umber, get a really, really dark colour and put it fairly wet as well as the white trees, just put some of these in and if it's damp, they should all dry. and blend so that they look like a bunch of trees. Now that looks like nothing on earth at the moment, which is how it should do. But what I've tried to do is in the middle, I've tried to keep it fairly light with not many tree trunks. And if you look, as the trees go back, even though I've just backed about, they get thinner and shorter as they go back. Because in the front, I'm going to do some uh, really good ones. How's everybody getting on? Anybody got anything to show us yet? I can't do this thing with the nail. You're doing what? I've used one of these. It's a blender for. Oh, I've got. Oh one yeah, of you're using that, yeah. Good yeah. Good. yeah. Keep your fingernails clean. Yeah. Plus, my fingernails are not very good anyway. No. Okay. No, you don't need much. You just need something hard. That blender will do it. I'll tell you what else will do it, and that's the back end of a paintbrush. When paintbrush, it yeah. But um, or. It's the only good use I've ever found for a credit card. They never work when I use them in shops, but you can use the corner of them on this. Brilliant. Uh, right, okay. Let's see. I wish I could work out how to put those sideways. So I can only see three if you want to go. Yeah. Have you got it on gallery view? I don't know how to do that. Who said that? Me, Leslie. Um, it's uh, a little, there's about nine little tiny squares all together. And if you click into that, it should bring up gallery view. Oh, it hasn't got that. Yeah, let's go all the way up. Now it's got, got that, way. that way. Or big, no, just speak of you. Now it's got everybody. Next door uh, to speak of you is gallery view. If you yeah, I can't do that. I can't. Anyway, I'm wasting time. Okay. Um, I'll try fiddling about with it when I'm not actually online. I know I did it when I had a meeting before. I had everybody across the top, but it's not working. How right. many? Okay. Pardon? How many people are on, Keith? Um, six. I think. <laughs> Right. If you, you should have a list, a lot of little things on your screen, Liz. And you can. Oh, it says participants. Yeah, click on that. Oh, I see. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Can you see us all now? No. Everybody ways to Liz. <laughs> there we go. Right. Okay. Um, now. We've got to hurry up because Leslie's got a hairdressing appointment. Emergency. The vanity of women. It looks perfectly all right to me. <laughs> right, okay, at the bottom, now that's dry a bit, I'm going to put some shadows into the bottom. I use my very dark colour and add some light red to it. So we've got sort of almost purpley colour. And I'm going to put this into the base where the trees go. I'm using the side of the brush and I'm just dragging it up. And then I'm reaching over like that because I've got a wad of 
tissue paper that I'm drying the brush off on. Now, I think we'll put the path in so I know where it's going. And I'm going to use the same color, but not very much paint. And I'm going to make a curly path. And it will go... Just start with the tip of the brush. And there we are, it's a bit wider in the beginning. It's not the be all and end all because there's, looks like a snow scene. Don't think I'll leave it, leave it as a snow scene. Uh, right, okay, now we've got where the path is. I'm gonna use some ultramarine glue. I've got far too much. I made the mistake, I've got the alizarin crimson next door to the ultramarine and I put too much water in that one and it's leaking into there so my ultramarine is becoming rather dirty. But no matter. So there we go, we've got ultramarine raw sienna and we've got sort of not green, more of a dirty yellow colour. And that is going... Now because... All that lot is going up, so I haven't put... Um, I've let it go where it wants to go. Well, what I'm doing now is I'm putting the ground in, so I'm using horizontal strokes. I'll be putting other stuff into it while it's still wet. So there, we've got that. And I'm going to use a little half inch brush. That was a close up of my dandruff. I was born in I'm going to use this little quarter inch squirrel and I'm going to mix up some, well, I'm not even going to mix it. I'm going to use some very strong raw sienna. And I'm just going to drop some of that in. Too dry. <clears throat> Needs to be about the consistency of milk. There. And that should just start seeping into that. Now all of this, you can see, don't worry about yours, because you can see this looks like nothing on earth. It's just a mess at the moment. That's, That's because I'll tame it later on. <laughs> So even though, even though it's a mess, see how much lighter that stripe, that was really dark, of course. I put some really thick dark into that. In fact, I'm going to use one of my secret weapons. I'm going to use, this is something called neutral tint with oh, a green, that. with a green tinge. And I'm just going to put some of that. No, too dark, too thick. When it's not thick enough, you get these cauliflowers where it bleeds the wrong way. The only snack with cauliflowers is that you can't eat them, they're the wrong sort of cauliflowers.
So there we go. We've got some darky bits. Am I allowed to say darky in public anymore? I'm not sure. <laughs> Sorry. Nope. I've never, ever, ever been accused of having good taste. Those of you who don't know me very well will soon realise that. Still, at least, we're all able to do stuff at the moment. Next week, we're going to be in prison again, aren't we? Right. Yep. Okay. Derek, you're in one of these northern places, aren't you? Where do you live? Are you in pretty nasty times at the moment? <laughs> Lan Lancashire. Well, We're in I... Lancashire, Ormskirk. Oh, I see, yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't really affect me anyway, so yeah. I don't work, so it doesn't really affect me. I'm retired now, so... Yeah. That's the brilliant thing for most of us, I think, is that we're retired. I mean, God knows what I'd do if I was still working. So I wouldn't be able to go to work. I've got COPD. So I'd be buggered. What are you doing these days, Al? Are you retired or what? Sorry, Keith, I just unmuted myself then. Yeah, um, yeah I retired about four years ago, something like that. When we moved you up here. You can't be retired. You're my one of my best friend's son. <laughs> it's just not fair. Well, I just that means just that I'm old enough to have somebody who's retired as a child. <laughs> oh well. I've got to have time to do my art, haven't I? Say again. I've got to have time to do some painting. Ah, uh, that's fair enough. Actually, your oil paintings were absolutely amazing. Oh, and here's you saying, can you help me out with my oil painting? And you're better than I am. Oh, thank you. That's very kind, Keith. Yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It's wonderful, especially now. I Honestly, I think we are very, very lucky people that we've got something we can do when other people are just sitting there watching Jeremy Kyle all day. You know, it's pretty <laughs> horrible. <laughs> Imagine that, good God. Well, I don't suppose it's on all day, but... It's not on at all now. He, he was fired, wasn't he? That's it again. He was fired. His show was oh, was he? Yeah, he hasn't been on for about five years, I think. Well, that just shows how often I was telling them, doesn't it? Yeah, well, you oh, haven't well. missed a lot. You didn't miss much. <laughs> no, he was... Um, Oh, I seem to remember something about it now. Incidentally, what I'm doing now is I'm using this little brush. I was doing it without thinking then. And I'm just using, I've got it to a fairly sharp chisel. And I'm just using the edge of it to wrap about with some of these tree trunks. Don't think that just because you've got a big brush, you can't use it for little things. Well, that seems to have decided me that the light's coming from that side, because that's where I put shadows on the trees. What I'm doing for this, where they're light, where I scraped off my finger, I'm just putting some shadow on one side, using the brush like that. So as it starts to get a bit of three-dimensional look to it. But I'm just doing this while everything's bleeding itself dry. Makes a change from my wife bleeding me dry, but never mind. Ooh, that's dangerous talk. I know, she never hears me anyway, so... No, she doesn't. It's really strange, actually. You wouldn't believe it, but... Since this lockdown malarkey, we're getting on better than we've ever got on in the past 30 years. That's because you're home more, Keith. <laughs> hey, come on, you've known me for God knows how many years. Me being home's enough to annoy anybody. 
<laughs> Actually, I think it's because I spend most of my time up here. All oh, right. <laughs> How's Peter, Liz? Oh, he's, he's in that lovely happy bubble. He forgets about the virus, doesn't know why I don't take him to the pub and the cafe. <laughs> oh, poor Peter. Well, no, oh, actually, lucky Peter. He's quite happy, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I know it's, um, it's you that's got all the problems. Yeah, I mean, if they it wasn't help. the virus, I'd have more help. Yeah. In fact, you and Jen should get together and have a natter. Yeah? I'll say no more of that, but yeah. swap details. It would have, it would have oh, been oh, oh. it would have been Ray's birthday today. Oh no. It's actually oh. twelve months. Ah. Oh. But I'm was glad it, he's out of this. Was it the same thing? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, I mean, Peter's in early stages yet, but it's, um, it's not nice. But luckily, so far, Peter's just been even lovelier than he ever was before. Yeah, and, until he wakes me up at night, you know. <laughs> yes. Uh, right, okay, most of that is fairly dry now. So what I'm going to do is clear this lot off. How's people getting on? Anybody got anything to show us? <laughs> I'm just laughing. You know what I'm like. Oh! I've got something, but it's not very good. <laughs> Who said that? Me, Jen. Oh, let's see then. It's not very good though. Can you see? It will be. Yes, I can see that. Yeah. It is My good. Mine, no. yeah, it's lovely. I mean, remember, mine's just a mess at the moment because we're not tidying it up yet. Um, so, right, what I'm going to do, first of all, is clear out the colours on my palette at the moment. And that is a very technical thing to do. You splodge it all over with water. This palette I've had for years it cost quite a lot of money but it's tin and enamel and it takes an awful lot of hammer and it doesn't stay oh that's good whereas the plastic ones tend to mm. but I got this when I first started watching Charles Evans, I was working there, mm. and Charlie uses one like this, but his, you cannot see the enamel. He reckoned he cleaned it once in 1976, <laughs> and, um, but he just uses the same colours, he uses seven colours, and he keeps them in exactly the same place. And, and mixes them in exactly the same place. He looks totally disorganised, but he knows that if he goes into that one, he's got greens, and that one he's got greys, you know what I mean? And he just does everything the same every time. But have a look at some of his um, videos on YouTube. He's an amazing artist. What's his name? Charles Evans. Charles Evans. And he oh, did... yeah, I've seen a couple of his. Yeah, they're very good. Say again. I have seen a couple of his videos. Yeah, he, he is. And he's very quick, isn't he? He's very quick. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you <clears> want to see quick, have a look at Dave Usher. He's brilliant as well. Um, but he's not a successful artist like Charlie. But he is. Oh, he does some amazing stuff. <clears> um. Mm -hmm. But what I like, one of the things I like about Charles Evans is the fact that this summer, while he's been locked down and not been able to go out, because he goes all over the world doing demos, um, he just did stuff on YouTube for nothing. And I thought, you know, for a Yorkshire one, that's bloody good, isn't it? You know? <laughs> so, so, right, okay, I'm glad. Got it nice and clean. 
Um, what I'm going to do now is mix up some bright autumn colours to go in the middle. So I'm going to start off. I'm leaving the <clears throat> this the way my palette is. This one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There is the Ron Ransom palette, um, which is the seven colours that Ron Ransom used. Who is the one who got me started doing um, loose watercolour? Amazing guy. His books are fantastic. Um, and then I added the Hooker's Green, the Sand, the Raw Sienna, no, the Yellow Ochre, and the Burnt Sienna. Those four added to most of those, or to some of those is Charlie's palette and then these are just really bright colours for when I fancy doing something really bright so even though it just does look a mess it is fairly well thought out and I've got everything I'll need no matter what I do there right okay so cadmium yellow Add me on the yellow and a touch of this is a lovely color called transparent on orange. What's the next color to cadmium yellow? Because I haven't that got one. One. That's, um, no, I meant I haven't got cadmium yellow, so oh, the nearest one, something like permanent yellow or got I name, yellow, primary what, yellow. What names have you got? Primary yellow. Uh, no, deep yellow, Naples yellow. No, oh yeah, primary. primary yellow. Primary yellow, that's the best. Okay. Okay, there we go. We've got bright yellow <laughs> with a little touch of orange in. Orange. Now this is where that is more or less dry. And I don't I'm what I'm doing now is wet on dry as opposed to wet in wet. So, using that, I'm going to do technical term for this is splodgy bits. <laughs> I'm going to do a fairly, you may have noticed I left a white bit at the far end, I did, say again, right, uh, I picked up some man, right, okay. I don't mind so much on this side of picking up stuff because there's going to be more shadow over there. So there I've got my blobs. I'm trying just to dab this on and I'm trying to use the heel of the brush. While it's still damp I'm going to mix up some yellow ochre and some burnt sienna I've got well not a problem but I've invested well not invested I've recovered from twig since I left two of my photo lamps and they keep the room lovely and warm but they don't have to dry the paint quickly right so sun's coming from that side so on this side we're going to put some darker bits oh that's the yellow ochre yeah that's the yellow ochre with a touch of burnt sienna or you might find it cool, you might have light red instead. It's sort of a reddy browny colour. 
Yeah. And if you don't have yellow ochre, you can use raw sienna. Okay, thank you. Nice colour anyway. Try to leave some little holes for the sky to show through, the birds to fly through. I'm mixing it a little bit thicker on this side. I want to bleed more where the shadows are. I'm going to add a little bit of burns umber into that. Make it, no one tell you paint's grey. Make it darker. As long as you stick something dark in it, it will get darker. You hear tales about not having to use more than three or four colours in watercolour. What that really means is if you mix them together in a wash and you've got more than four colours, more than three colours really, it tends to go muddy especially if you're using cheaper paints because they just can't cope with it right we've got some splodges okay we're getting somewhere now. And you can see it's starting to turn into a bit of a landscape now. You've got it looks like trees. What I'm going to grab next is the great round. Now this is a sable brush which I got from the SAA. Not cheap, but it will last forever famous last words I'll probably lose it <laughs> I had another one the reason I got this was I had a rosemary company one which vanished in the gallery somehow and no idea how but that was a 50 quid brush Doesn't oh. much yet. so somebody has got a bloody good brush but nothing they probably don't even know what they've done. They've picked it up with one of theirs. Right, okay. So it's probably clotted with acrylic now. <laughs> right, okay. Now I've got some dark in there. And with this, what I mean, if you get a decent brush, look at the point that you can get on that. Mm -hmm. Big, thick bottom bit but it's um it comes to a needle point and you can make tiny little marks or put in big shadowy bits The reason I've got this out is to actually put some darks into the base. It's always dark uh, at the floor of the woods because that's why trees grow. They grow to get to the lighter bits. Okay. I'm mixing it very dry and I'm using side and brush. 
Um, I'm not sure if you can see the effect, but it's just leaving sort of bits behind as I drag it over. And that's called dry brush technique because you use bum, 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 a dry brush. Somebody keeping chickens? <laughs> it's just my message is coming through. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I'm just joking. <laughs> hey, listen, it's a novelty for me to be able to hear anything. Right, I've got some darks in there, some lights in there, and now it's just oh no, one more technique I want to show you. Come here. That one will boing. That's the picture bouncing all over the place. Right, okay. Oh, I've not the uh, any. <laughs> yeah. But it's gone really. No, that's because I've got it further back. Yeah, that's okay. Right, now then. That more or less where it was before I head back here. Right, okay. Um, one thing I want to do now is I'm going to use that quarter inch again, no half inch, and I'm going to make some very, very dark, dark, that's paint gray. and some of my burnt sienna. No, not first, the yeah, burn Tumba. So, oh, is there a big difference between burn Tumba and burn Sienna? Yes, one's much redder than the other. Hang on, that will get a bit of paper. Burn Tumba. <clears throat> Right, this one, put that down somewhere, that, is burnt sienna, and That's burnt umber. That's much redder and that's much browner. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay, thanks. It's worth doing that with all your paints so you know what colour they actually are. Because, quite frankly, different paint makers make give different names mm. the same colour. So it's a bit tricky unless you stick to the same brand all the time. Um, or we know which brand you're going to use. Right, okay. Really thick colour. Really thick dark. Payne's grey. Burnt umber. And what I'm going to do, where it's all on the path here, I'm going to lay that thick colour on top of it. Really, really thick.
running out of paint. Right, so now we've got that thick paint. And this is a matter of timing. If you get it right, it really works. If you don't, done it again. <laughs> really good at headbutting the thing. Right, okay. Now, I've got a credit card, or a bit of a credit card. I told you they do come in handy once they stop working in shops. And all I'm going to do is... Pull out some of that dark. And it gives the impression of sort of rough round stone, whatever you want it to look like. This has gone too dry now. It's, like I say, it's a matter of timing. I just caught that white just as it's starting to go off. Whereas that side's got a bit dry. But it doesn't matter because I'll just put shadows going across there. But there you go. We've got that and that and that. Now I'm just going to fiddle with it and put it trees into it. Oh, first of all, the path, the path, path, whatever. Bit of light red. No, that, yes, that is light red. And a bit of water on the back. Got a ready brown, plenty of water. And I'm going to do Half going across. Take some of the paint off it in the distance. What I'm doing is pulling it out with a damp brush. If it's very wet, you take most of the paint off your brush. Like that. Like that. And then you can pull out bits when you want to. All that's supposed to be doing is letting it taper off a bit in the far ground. Okay, now, stay there. Right, the brush was rolling off. Rigger and mix a sort of I'm going to mix two different colours. I'm going to mix a darky brown, which is the burnt umber. Or you can actually, a good way of making burnt umber is if you get raw umber. And mix it with burnt sienna. <laughs> but it's not far off the burnt umber in the first place. So there's my darky brown. I'm going to put some of this neutral tint in it. So I want that dark. And this light red colour I'm going to mix with some raw sienna. I've got a fairly thick yellowy lighty colour there and a fairly thick dark colour and all I'm going to do now is put in some trees. Now we're not going to be able to see all of the trees, we're not going to be able to see the whole amount of trees in a forest and also those trees we can see we're not going to see all of. Does that make sense? 
So we only need to do bits. I'm using the rigger. And with the light bit, and then put the dark side in, and they sort of blend together. It doesn't matter which way you do it. If you lay them side by side. They blend together and give you a sort of three-dimensional thing and then once you've got a trunk you start one thing i used to do almost regularly was to do trees almost like ladders. You do a tree trunk, and then I used to do and it looks like nothing on earth. What you've got to do is do random things with branches. Any of you been to my workshop when I did Tree is growing and they go. The reason they never grow completely straight is because they keep seeing sunshine. They go, oh, sunshine. And then the sun goes in. Sunshine. <laughs> and they go all over the place because they're just looking for the sun. And then others get very heavy with leaves and they go, oh, oh I'm tired now. And you can just do almost anything with branches. They all look different. And the good thing about using a rigger is that you can do tiny little twiglets with it. Or you can press, use the body of it and do bigger bits. You can use it. fairly solidly, clean most of the paint off it and get a broken line. And all I'm doing is just putting some tree trunks in. And you can see I'm not drawing. I'm just putting lines in. I am taking some notice of where I'm going, but I'm not making it fiddly and detailed. That's the words I'm looking for. Mm. Some of these Tea. I've already got. I have, I have two sugars. I've got two sugars for me. Thanks. <laughs> what I should do is give people tea breaks. Anybody want a break now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll have a little break and I'll faff about with this. You go and get yourself cups of tea and go to the loo and stuff like that. Right. I'm terrible because when I'm painting, I just sit down and paint. Hello, Peter. Oh, it's not Peter. Thought that was me. Hey. Yes, please. You Let won't me. turn this oh. off, will you? You are. Yeah. Yeah. You won't turn this off, will you? No. Because I might get, I might get back again. <laughs> I, I, I just want to nip and see if Peter's all right. Yeah, that's fine. You just tootle off. Okay, it won't be a minute. 
Yeah, okay. Oh, poor Peter. <laughs> yeah. He is such a lovely, lovely man. And of course, at the moment, Liz is a very dear friend of mine. I've known her for years and years and years. And um, with it being this bloody stuff going on, she's having such a hard time. It's not funny, Keith. <laughs> I know. I had it with my mother. Um, I dread it if it happens to me. I know. Really, like... I keep going. I keep painting. I keep keeping my mind going as much as I can. Yeah. Trouble is, they don't really know the cause, do they? No. Nope. Although Ray used to play football and had the ball, so... It's, um... It's not so much for the people who get it, because I mean, like Liz, Liz says, Peter's as happy as the day is long most of the time. He, he gets confused, but it's the poor sods like you and Liz who are left behind. And me. To be honest, it, it's, it's, it is everybody, because every case is different. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. No, it's just... It's just awful. Oh God, we're getting morbid. Let's talk. <laughs> we need the sun to come out. Yeah, we go pop, 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 pop. Happy pop. God, I'm getting old. Yeah, I'm terrible when it comes to giving people breaks because I will just paint forever. Which is the main bone of contention between me and Caroline Reed when you think about it. I'm stuck up here enjoying myself. Well, I got up five o'clock yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And um, I think I was the first viewer on your video. You must have stayed up and done two in a night. Oh. Is that right? Wow. <laughs> on YouTube, your last one you did, which was... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Oh. Um. I was the first one on. <laughs> I'm back. Hello. I made myself a cup of tea. That's a good idea. Liz has gone to check on Peter to see if he's all right. And I've just been sat sitting here doing more painting. I'm very impressed with your confidence. Um, basically, when it comes down to it, that is what I am. I make no bones about it. I am confident which is why I do this sort of thing. A lot of the people I teach are better than me. Um, when I was in my twenties, I thought I was a brilliant artist and I was absolutely crap. Um, but now I'm a load better than I was and I know that I'm not particularly good. I know what I'm doing and I can get stuff done, but I'm never ever going to make millions. So it's probably just as well that I didn't become a full time artist. <laughs> it's a crowded market, isn't it? It's, um, it's, what, it's like all the creative things. If you, it depends on luck more yeah. than anything else. Because, yeah. I mean, actors. I really know. Pardon? I really know. Yeah, and it's it's on who you know when you meet them. Yeah. Um, Taking the opportunity when you can. 
Yeah, but it's not always getting the opportunities as well. I mean, I know people. Oh, who's? Oh, are you waiting to come back in again? Again? No, Keith. I think it's me. I'm trying to get it on my laptop, and it wouldn't do it. And now. Oh, I that's fair been. enough. Sorry. Um, it did. I just. I'm just like learning. I just. Oh, did I? I don't know what I did then. I just clicked on it. I don't know if I let you in or not. Yeah, I come in. I've been trying to get it, and it it just plays me up. But I got it on my iPad. Oh, I see. You see, sorry. You're very rich. Oh, Liz is back. How's Peter? <laughs> yeah, he's all right. He thought I was taken taken him to your art class. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, you can do. Sit him in the corner. Yeah. Oh, he wouldn't hear it. No, I know it's um. What you need is to find a way of putting it on your big screen telly. Oh God! And Have then he would say, "Oh, he's famous, him. I know him." <laughs> I've had a job putting it on this. <laughs> I think you've done really well, Liz. Considering I am. I'm very proud. You were completely and absolutely computer illiterate. Yeah. You've done amazing things. <laughs> when, um... What about these 20 emails I got from you this morning? God knows. I'm nearly as bad as you. I've no idea how they got there. Saying it was cancelled. I cancelled. The reason this one came out for 11 was because for some somehow... I'm getting a little bit better with Zoom now than I ever was. But when I first started it, I did a, my gouache workshop. I put, for some reason, by mistake, as um, a recurring thing. And I never managed to get rid of it until today. But I stopped that once. I don't know why I just like, came out with 20 things. Anyway, I've got a little hake here oh i and, want one of those and where did you get that from this it's yeah. um i got it from i probably got it from the saa but you can get them on um on ebay you can get them on amazon um looks like a pastry brush if you <laughs> if you want <laughs> um if you i can i can get you one I can get you a set or one cheap through the SAA. Well, I am a, I am a member of the SAA. Oh, that's fair enough then. You can get them from there, you can get quite a bit off. Although I can get it even cheaper because I'm a PA, so. Well, you get me one then, please. Yeah, who is it talking? Leslie. Okay. It's difficult because I've only got some of the things. Yeah. Right, okay. With this little hake, I am, I've got it, and I've got the, can you see, I've got the bristles all bashed out, and I've got it fairly dry with dark paint, and all I'm going to do is, mess up the skyline, which is supposed to be coming out completely different. Good job you can't see that. <coughs> Messed it up. <laughs> there. Right, put a bit more water in it. Dry it off a bit more, see if that works better. What, what are you actually doing, Keith? What I'm trying to do... Yeah, that's better. I'm trying to make the twiggy bits at the top. Oh, okay. Huh? Someone's ducks escaped again. <laughs> not Pauline's not with us this week. She's got the elect electricians in, but she's got chickens, Pauline. And she's getting half a dozen eggs a day. Wow. 
just didn't know what you're doing. She emailed me and said, I've got six chickens. I said, oh, there you go. That's Sunday lunch for the next month. <laughs> Please. Right, okay. I'm really messing this up, but never mind. I'm showing you techniques. Um, what it needs now is more contrast, some light and shade. Um, they may dry quite a bit better. You can always do the same thing with your finger, like that. As long as you just do it gently and drag stuff so it just catches the tooth of the paper. Okay, I'm gonna do, no, first, first things first, I'm gonna mix a shadowy color. Um, Alizarin. Too much water. Alizarin. Ultramarine. And some light red. We've got sort of brownie. I'm going to stick a bit of hope green in that. There, that's a nice shadowy colour. And I'm going to put shadows coming across the road this side. And I'll start off with some of the trees in there. And then where these stones went wrong, I'm just putting a shadow over the whole thing. Dark into the bottom. You see this when I do that? You know what they call that, don't you? That digital art. <laughs> yes, <laughs> of course. I nicked that from Charles Evans, I must admit. It's one of his gags. But there's no reason on earth why you shouldn't use your fingers. Especially if you're Chrissy Hine, you think about that one. <laughs> Actually, brass in pocket could almost be about oil paint. Now this is what I'm doing wrong now. I am fatting. And that is the one thing which you must never do when you're doing watercolor. So I am totally ruining this by fatting. I'm going to try to do a little bit of a rescue. Clean water. And I'm going to use this transparent orange again. very thick some of the ultramarine again to get that really really bright color and i'm making it almost tube consistency and all i'm going to do is put some full brown leaves
you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cheat. Excuse me, I'll probably bash the thing again. No, it's not there. Excuse me, I am just about to go and get a secret weapon. Wow. Back in joint. Right and back. I've got my glasses, which were lurking behind me. Difference with glasses, it is opaque. So into that mix, I'm putting some white glass. I need to put more of the orange into it. Right now, it's very light. And I just put some, and they will actually sit on the top. So which gouache colours have you mixed? White and orange? Just, yeah, I've, used, I've just used white gouache and I've mixed it with the orange that I okay. had already on the yeah. palette. That's it. And what's I'm the not difference? making a very good job of this. I apologise. Sometimes it just doesn't work. <laughs> Looks fine to me. What's the difference between gouache and acrylic? Um, acrylic is made with um, polymer resins, which are plastic, and gouache is made with gum araba, arabic, which is exactly the same as watercolor, but there's less water in it. There's less gum arabic. All paint is coloured mud or other sort of pigment mixed with a blender, with a binder rather, not a blender. And consequently, you've got um, oil paint is pigment mixed with linseed oil and other sorts of stuff. Acrylics is the same pigment mixed with polymer resin. Watercolour is the same pigment mixed with quite a lot of gum arabic and some water. And you've got, then you've got gouache, which is the same thing mixed with a lot a lot less polymer resin so it's and there's more pigment and there's more filler to make it opaque don't know if that made sense because i'm thinking at the same time as i'm talking which does not help i'm not a woman <laughs> multitasking yeah blokes can't multitask it's impossible i didn't want to say that no, it's true. It keeps us out of all sorts of trouble when people say, why didn't you? I used to say, I was reading the paper. I can't do multitasking. Yeah. Right, all I'm doing now, is we're using this to ashy colour. I'm just putting blobs, <clears throat> get a bit of contrast. It's 
an attempt at rescue. What I'm going to be doing next week is using a watercolour base and then gouache to do a gouache picture. So that's what we'll be doing. A little word of advice. I seem to say this an awful lot, I don't mean to, but if you are going to be buying new paints, if you're going to be buying gouache especially, um, you get so many people online saying, oh I bought some gouache, I'm really disappointed, it doesn't do anything it's supposed to do, and it turns out they got it from the works. Yeah. And um, they are, they look lovely, but they're made for kids. Mm -hmm. and um, they've got all these luscious colours but they haven't got the proper pigments they've got too much filler they put bits of talc and all sorts in to it's a bit like the drug trade you put all sorts of rubbish in it to um, cheapen it add it out yeah and then it just doesn't work and then, so you really need to get decent gouache if you're going to use it. It's worse, don't mean worse, it's more noticeable in gouache than any other medium. Okay. Because it just, it comes out plasticky with cheap ones because they put all sorts of stuff in it and it just doesn't work. So what's now, what I'm doing now, I don't know if this is working or not, I'm just putting bits of light leaves here and there. I'll put some thick dark leaves as well. Looks lovely. Yeah, it does. does but look it's nice. starting to, yeah, it's it's starting nice. to look a bit rescued. This is one thing that gouache is brilliant for, and that's rescuing watercolours. Yeah. Because watercolour if you do more watercolour over it, it will pick up and it will just go a mess. Muddy. So if you do this, or right, mine. once it's really, really dry, I'll do it. Right, okay. Um, I've done a little bit more to this. Um, since I finished doing the workshop I wasn't happy with the center um, I wanted to show this sort of glowy thing in the middle of it so I've just added some more white gouache and some other I think I put some yellow and some blue in there in the trees above they were getting a bit um, clumpy so I put some more light colours in there um, I've also put some more clumps of uh, of gouache there some sky holes in the trees um, gone over some of the branches a little bit um, knocked in the shadows they look darker on camera than they are they look bluer as well um, but basically I've just tidied it up a little bit and what I really wanted was the glow looking through the trees so basically that's where it is now okay I'll put it up online now <laughs>